So, sitting in the car park at Evo was a Rolls Royce Wraith. And we only had it for a couple of days and I wasn't doing the driven on it, but I thought we should do a very quick video, even if it's just down the road and back, just so I can show you a few bits about it, because, well, why not? You know, Rolls Royces aren't necessarily the most Evo cars. You know, I, I like Caterhams and Atoms and lightweight things, and this way is just done 2.4 tonnes. But variety is the spice of life and, and we like all things that are sort of car-like, so yeah, why not? It's fun, isn't it? Look at it, big old barge. The first thing you notice, because, well, why wouldn't you, is the fact that it's got suicide doors. Instantly, it's cool somehow, I think you'll agree. The next thing you notice is just for the quality of the interior when you come and sit in it. You can almost, you can smell the, the leather as you get close to it. And those doors do actually make access wonderfully easy, wonderfully elegant somehow. I don't know why, it just, just makes it easier. And yeah, what a nice place to be. It does feel a bit like piloting a boat, to be honest. Um, you feel like you should sort of moor it up rather than park it. But nonetheless, after a while you sort of you get used to the size and, and it's actually surprisingly sort of precise and sort of confidence inspiring to drive. It is wonderfully, I suppose the only way to describe the ride is pillowy and it's everything you hope a Rolls-Royce would be in terms of its ride comfort. Despite the fact this is, it comes as standard on 20-inch wheels, uh, this is on the optional 21s, and although you get the occasional, occasional sort of thump, it's like a sort of distant, sort of distant avalanche, I suppose, um, hearing it elsewhere in the mountains. Uh, if you go over a pothole, it just, it just sort of clatters over it a little. But it is generally just a wonderfully serene experience and a bit like I suppose sort of driving an electric car um, or purely electric is, is um, an experience in itself just through the silence this has its own allure because of the, the sheer I don't know, grandeur of it I suppose it is obviously meant to be the sports car of the Rolls-Royce range it's still very much a GT at best but there is something lovely that that pillowy ride I was talking about you suspect it could turn into wallow when you start sort of pushing it really hard, but actually you come into corners and there's some really well controlled damping and there's something very nice about a car with a bit of roll and a bit of ride quality that actually makes it very enjoyable to push down a road because providing it's well controlled, which this is, you actually get a lovely sensation of how mass moves around and although it's not obviously it's not sharp in any sort of way at all it's still it's enjoyable I have to say it's much more enjoyable than any of us thought it would be uh, Jethro and Dan both drove it as well and both came back very pleasantly surprised by what this was like to drive I have to say the rest of the time well you just have this sort of this majesty this huge bonnet with the wonderful spirit of ecstasy which obviously sort of rises up out of the bonnet as the car unlocks which I always think is quite a nice touch the other thing I love is the fact that when park this car up and you stop the wheels obviously the, the center caps would normally be pointing in whichever direction they stopped in this they automatically reset so that the Rolls Royce badge is correctly orientated it's nice I like touches like that the performance well from the 6.6 .6 litre twin turbo v12 you've got 624 brake horsepower and 590 pounds foot of torque all that torque comes in from just 1500 rpm as well so it really does waft effortlessly. 0.60, 4.4 seconds, and doing a standing start I did one just out of interest, and it's sort of, um, it is a bit like a, a boat because the front rises up and it starts sort of planing down the road, which is, is quite fun really. Down these small lanes, well it obviously still feels like a big car, but the steering is pretty accurate. It, it has, I suppose, the nice thing is that the, the rate of turn and the rate of feel and rate of reaction is commensurate with the, the roll in the suspension so it doesn't try and sort of trick you it's not overly sharp or anything like that and I like things like the fact you have power reserve rather than a, a rev counter here so it goes from obviously 100% down to down to zero depending how much throttle and performance you're actually using. Wraith by the way in case you're wondering is um, you know, ghosts, phantoms, wraiths you think they're all the same thing but the wraith specifically 
is actually the name for a ghost of a living person, which um, seems somehow even more sort of spectrally shiversome. Other things I like, well, you can probably tell just how quiet it is in here. Uh, I speak fairly quietly, and it probably sounds like I'm shouting compared to the normal sort of voiceovers I do. Top speed, well, that's 155 miles an hour, but limited, as is the way with most BMW products, you know, this is a Rolls Royce. You can feel how well it controlled it is through, even through the high speed stuff here. And although it moves around, and you can feel the weight of two and a half tons, it really is a beguiling driving experience. Something different. I think if you had your, your big ultimate garage, then you'd want one of these in it just for the sort of the sheer sense of occasion. I love the wheels as well. They look like a sort of a modern alloy version of, of the original sort of Bugatti wheels you'd find on a Type 35. And there we are, back at the Evo offices, hopefully in time for somebody to pick this up. So I'm afraid it's only a very short introduction to the Rolls-Royce Wraith and perhaps we'll do a longer video. If you like this, then leave it in the comments box below and we'll get one back in and we'll do a proper proper video, take it to a track or something suitably daft, but uh, for now I just thought you would like to see what a Rolls Royce Wraith was like. <laughs> of course it had nothing to do with the fact that I just wanted to take it for another drive and avoid being in the office sitting at the desk writing copy that I should be writing. Nothing at all, I promise you. Hello. You can't turn those little things in the middle of the wheels by hand. Hello. Not by hand? No. You've got to do it by... Yeah, they turn when you drive, <laughs> but not... How is that? What, so they, they stay upright when you drive along? Yeah, they always, yeah, they always got the RR. But they don't rock. Don't always they? when it's up when you're driving along? Yeah. That's amazing. Do you fault on that? I did, yeah. I did one yeah. earlier, so yeah. yeah. Uh, there you go. Is that any good? Yeah, it's a lovely thing, actually. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. So shit. Thank you very much. Long term, maybe. <laughs> I could get used to this. Yeah. <laughs> Fit the bike in the back somehow, probably. Yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> wasn't it? Probably fit in the boot, actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, I'll go and find somewhere to park in it. I see any trouble, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to move that Lexus, which is quite big, but it's probably still not going to be enough space, is it? No. I'll give it a go. That is the only other thing. With something this big, you do wonder where on earth you're going to be able to park it. One thing that does at least make parking this easier is the um, bird's eye view camera. I think it's the little touches in the interior that really sort of make the difference. So although you've got sort of bits and bobs that are obviously from BMW, um, it's all been sort of disguised very, very well. It's effectively a tarted up iDrive, but Looks very nice nonetheless. Still works well. Not entirely sure about the clock though. Luminous hands look a little incongruous perhaps. Things open and shut with a sort of certain well-oiled smoothness and you get you find all sorts of just surprising little things in the car. Um, you know there's obviously the things like the spirit of ecstasy going up and down from the nose of the car which I mentioned before but you've got the umbrella in the uh, sort of you know tucked into the sill of the car which is just a nice touch. I know you can get on a Skoda Superb these days but they nicked it from Rolls first so um, yes they still do it better than others and obviously it's, an, it's, it's a slightly nicer umbrella I have to say you know I'm, I'm not a connoisseur of umbrellas but I, I would definitely say that there is more weight and heft and um, possibly even more water resistance who knows um, compared to a Skoda umbrella I'm, I might be wrong on that front but um, so don't quote me. Anyway that's the Rolls-Royce Wraith and what a very lovely thing it is too. Oh, price, I forgot to mention price. Um, well, well, if you have to ask, really, but since you did, uh, £237,000, I think. It's called 240, 250 between friends once you've added in a few of those little luxuries that you've decided you simply must have a particular type of wood or something like that. Perhaps like this wood. Beautiful, sort of satin finish. Lovely. Just like a sideboard. 